Hi, Jeff here, and I'm going to show you something really unique. These are some of my dairy cows here, and I'm going to show you how you can convert food forest into milk. All right, it's pretty easy, pretty simple. I'm going to use one of these. And another little gizmo, right, that chops it up, getting it ready for them to chow down. They're going to chew down some food forest components, and that's what converts into food forest milk. So here's one of my favorites and one of the cow's favorites. This is Leukina. Leukina is 38% green leaf protein. It's nearly as, as rich as, well, it is as rich as lucent. Um, and it's a great nitrogen fixing perennial. So um, part of our support species, as a lot of the milk conversion is, so I need to prune these anyway. So indication of not too sharp secateurs there. There we go. I'm going to strip those leaves off. They're going to be part of our milk conversion. Now, just here, I've got a pigeon pea. So, Kajanus kajans, dull pea, wonderful support species in the food forest and food. Pigeon pea. Cows love it, right? So, that's one. But I'm also, I don't have to go very far, you see. Right here, I've got bamboo. So this is a, a multiplex, and um, it's got lots of silica and calcium in it, all good for a cow. So I'm just going to prune some of that. Another great milk conversion. So here's one of my favorite fruits. I mean, you've got to love dark red and black berries, because cows know what we're doing. Look. I, I'm coming. OK, so this is mulberry. Um, White mulberry actually has more uh, protein in the leaf than black mulberry, but they love it all. And we love our mulberries. They're just the most fantastic tree, berry crop. So, and, it, and they've just finished. They've finished fruiting not that long ago and they need a prune, um, much heavier than this. But uh, I'll just include some of these. Um, mulberry. That's a great addition. Now, just here, if you follow me around here, I have ice cream bean. Now, ice cream bean is a big legume tree and a support species of our food forest. It's also good food as a, a pulp in the bean that tastes like vanilla ice cream kind of thing. Um, they call it ice cream bean, but it's a great forage crop and they tend to germinate in the food forest off seed and you don't want them all. So I just take out the young ones, which I should be doing anyway. So we're gonna add ice cream bean into the milk conversion. Now here, this leafy plant here is, is arrowroot, uh, canna edulis. And it's a support species we grow as an edible root um, you can make arrowroot flour from, but also a great mulch plant, very, very hardy, like a lot of our food forest support. But the cows love it. They really love it. You can bulk out with this. We have so much of it, so easy to grow. So arrowroot, another great conversion in the food forest. Okay, now it's raining and the sun's out. They call this area the rainbow region for a good reason. We often have these rain and sun at the same time. So somewhere there's a rainbow. We'll find it maybe in a minute. But bananas, we've done a big prune here um, and we're mulching a lot of our prunings, but also cows love banana leaves. So we can add banana leaves. Now I've just cut down here um, a, a black sugar cane, which we use for juice. And um, it happens we're pruning our black sugar cane at this time of year. And of course, um, cows love sugar cane and doesn't matter if it's black sugar cane. So we can add that in the mix. You can imagine what this milk is like, I mean, 
it's not exactly like a feedlot now. We've got, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's quite the opposite to a feedlot, actually. All right, let's keep going. So no, no permaculture, food forest or farm in the subtropics or tropics is ever short of sweet potato. Um, we're always oversupplied. So the vine of the sweet potato, which is how we transplant it, is also a great food for cows. Okay, I think we've got enough, right? We're gonna chop these up and make breakfast for Daisy. So now we need a bucket to receive the chop. And here's our gourmet cow salad. Let's start off with something nice and sweet. So this is my little hand chopper. Now some banana leaf. Now some sweet potato. Most of our woody material, we can just strip the leaves off. Not have to be too fussy about it. So we can just strip our mulberry leaves off. We don't want the woody stuff in there. We could actually grow another mulberry tree from the cuttings if we wanted. Our pigeon pea is quite easy to strip. Our bamboo strips easy. Most of the woody stuff, our leukina, The idea is we're keeping her well occupied while we're milking her and she's selecting her way through the salad. She's got all this good nutrient rich stuff. Her manure becomes high in nutrient then. And that actually, some of that goes to the pasture but some of it comes back to the food forest after it's been through a compost system. So just quick hand work and get this done. And we can start milking. Right, just strip the bamboo backwards like that. All mulch, what we don't use just goes as mulch anyway. It's like we don't have to be perfect about it. We don't have to be perfect about anything actually. It's quite easy to get a great result without being perfect in all the permaculture systems. You just need a bit of technique, that's all. There we go, strip that back. Strip that back. A bit more pigeon pea. We've got quite a salad here. And uh, like you, anybody eats just a plain salad, it's quite different to eating a really diverse salad. And you, you tend to take your time picking your way through it. Well, the cows are no different. That's how they approach it. So we get a little bit more time to milk. Um, and if we have a lot of cows, we use our singular, single cow milking machine. But we've just got one cow in milk at the moment. So we're gonna do the classic house cow milking job now and get some of that gorgeous raw milk out that no matter what you, you can't buy it. <laughs> it's not possible to buy it. Well, it's not legal to buy it anyway, unless you have your own cow. So there we go. Let's have a look at this tossed salad. There. What we can add, for very good reason, is some mill run. This is a, a waste product from grain production. It's just, a, it's just a bit of high carbon, but we can mix that with something very special. So we can add some cut chaff, fine cut chaff, and mix that together. And we can also go into an organic cow food that has biochar in it. So because this has biochar in it, the uh, beneficial microorganisms in the gut of the cow, which are very numerous, lock in and take habitat in the biochar and come out the other end well housed, <laughs> ready to 
interact with the soils. So if we mix that together, mill run, a bit of chopped chaff, and that biochar organic cattle food, we can now add moldable minerals. We can add kelp. We can add all the minerals of the soil with all rock minerals. So it gives us something to stick the material together because if we now add some beautiful rainwater in there, we can mix that now. We can mix it into a sticky porridge, look. See how that goes? If you're adding all the minerals in there, you've got them stuck in there. So now you dump that into your food forest cut salad. And it'll stick in amongst the rest of the leaves. Everything will have a bit of that porridge stuck to it. So now the minerals, all the minerals of the ocean and the kelp, all the minerals of the land in the all rock, rock dust powder, is stuck onto all the leaves. So now we're talking. Now we're talking about creating a uh, remineralization like a like an ice age through the gut of a cow right we're remineralizing back onto the pasture into the composts and into the worm farms or wherever we use that manure now let's see if she wants breakfast so here's my bucket and I'm gonna put it in the milking bales now let's see if I can get her come on come on Daisy yeah, breakfast time. So we're gonna... Daisy was born here. And she's gonna go straight in and put her head in the head bell. She'll dip her horn through, look. There we go. And I'm not gonna hurt her. I'm just gonna lock her head in there. So she can't come back out. I'm just gonna put a chain around the back end. So it, it discourages her from kicking a little bit. I'm in here, close up and personal. Just a little bit of warm water on the udders. Get it, come on. That's it, that's it. Good girl. That's it. So I'll clean the udders. Now, and nice and clean. She's a clean girl anyway. I'll get my milking bucket ready. And I'll put a bit of calendula ointment on my hands. Um, it just makes it a bit slippier. Good for the skin. Any surplus I'll put on my face for a better complexion. So I just rub that on there. And this, I just put a bit on, on her udders. Get a bit of slip there. Also good for her udder complexion. Or her teats here. So here we are. She's ready to go. She knows what's going on. She'll, she'll move her legs back for me. Bring the bucket in. And here we go. We're milking. So... I just strip out like that. And just like the calf, I give her a tap up in the udders and pull down the teats. Now, that's called stripping. I'm stripping it down. Or I can squeeze like that. I haven't got the best milkmaid hands because my hands are a bit big. Milkmaids have small hands and strong forearms, right? But you can change the muscle group by squeezing like that. So you've got to go squeeze, 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 squeeze. Now it shouldn't rub on my hand like that. Oh, I can strip. There we go. Raw milk coming out. And she's happy. She's having breakfast. I can change to the other two quarters. These are called quarters. And she's got four quarters to strip out. And hopefully she doesn't take a pee or a poo while I'm doing it. But, you know, Daisy was born on the farm. She's about nine years old. 
She's had about nine milking seasons. She had about eight or nine calves. Um, she's born and bred Zaytuna girl. She knows me very well. I can lean my head on her and feel if the muscles are moving and she might kick. Just like that. Uh, hey, good, she's right on cue, look at that. Um, okay, so when she does that, I can tap her on the inside of the elbow here. Look, and I move her back. She just wanted to adjust her, her salad consumption there. Now you've got to be quick with that bucket if she kicks. And she often slaps you in the face with that big tail. That's all part of the deal. I can, I can milk alternately like that, or I can milk together. And you can have a drink while you're milking if you want. You can go like that. Oh. Let me get that one. Oh. Love doing that with the kids. They really like it. Couldn't get fresher milk than that, could you? Okay, here we go. We should have about eight litres by the time I'm done. I've probably got milk all over my face now. It is definitely raw fresh milk, that was. All right, so this will go to make yogurt, butter and cheese, plus, um, of course, just the milk itself and cream and cream. We can separate the cream on this easily. Um, and um, there's, there's a whole mixture of products that have definitely been with us for millennia with our interaction with cows. Uh, my wife, Nadia, is a Bedouin um, heritage, so she has all kinds of interesting products. She can even make a yogurt that lasts for two years, a dried yogurt pack. Um, we'll go down that rabbit hole later and show you all those things because this is a beautiful part of the farm, having a milking cow. So, a dairy cow, what a great interaction it is on a farm. There are so many connections between the cow and the forest and the foliage that it can eat. It can convert foliage that we can't eat into product that we can. So, dairy product and meat, but also, there's the manure conversion, and that then goes on to create extra fertility. Plus, there's the control side of things. So the animals control landscape, and they condition landscape when you move them correctly. And, and, and you pay attention to what actually is beneficial for the land and for the animals. It's a whole set of connectivity, and it sets a wonderful regular rhythm on a daily basis, on a yearly basis, as calves arrive and more milk production comes online. It's a wonderful interaction. It's a great way to set up the main fertility flows on a larger piece of land.